everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano and the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series. Get them now, jeremysiskin.com. What are you waiting for? You know, it's autumn, leaves are starting to fall, school is back in session, now's the time. I don't know what I'm saying, I'm just vamping. Uh, but today I want to talk about planing, and planing is really interesting to me um, because. I've been thinking about how planing is different than transposing. And in reality, planing is transposing. <laughs> okay, so planing refers to taking something and transposing it. <laughs> um, so why do we have this word planing? What does it mean that's different? Um, I have some ideas. And um, mostly, I think planing involves specifically taking something outside of a key, okay? Um, so generally, planing is done um, against the backdrop of a stable key center, and we're doing something that kind of goes above and clashes maybe with that stable key center, okay? Um, so planing is kind of this specific sort of transposition where it, the uh, harmony is going along like this, and we're taking something and we're moving it all around the harmony. So that is how I think planing is different than transposing, but functionally you could use the word transpose instead of plane. I also have been thinking about what, what sorts of things we can plane, and I made this three-part list. And I'm gonna make a little 3A, and I actually wanna start on that 3A, um, because there's a specific kind of planing that I think is useful to start with. So we're gonna start over here on 3A of planing beneath a melody, okay? And so when we're planing beneath a melody, we're going to start with a shape and then move it exactly the same intervals that the melody moves. So let's take an easy example. Uh, let's take Mary Had a Little Lamb. Okay. Um, so let's say my shape is going to be a major triad in first inversion. That's second inversion. I'm an amateur. <laughs> uh, major triad in second inversion. That's what we're going to do with the E on top. So it's a C major triad. And so now wherever this shape goes, I'm going to take those same intervals. So I'm always having this major triad in a second inversion, just like I said from the beginning. <laughs> okay. And so why do we consider this planing? Because the key center, the overall key center has never moved from C, but this shape that we're moving is going into all these different key centers because we're maintaining the same interval structure regardless of where we are in the key, right? And let's just contrast this again with like modal voicings. If I'm doing modal voicings in C, then I'm never gonna go outside of the key. So I'm always gonna have a third and a fourth below the melody. Lydian. Okay, so that's not planing because that interval structure is actually changing from place to place. So we could do it with something more complicated too. You know, we could take um, the beginning mm -hmm. of Blue Bossa. Okay, so if I'm going to do modal voicings for this, I'm going to think in C Dorian first. Okay, and so everything, every single note I play, I'm using so up voicings here, is in C Dorian until I get to the F minor, where I'm going to go into F Dorian. If I'm planing, whatever this first shape is, 
I'm going to move everything in those exact same intervals. So notice I have a major third on top and then all perfect four. So. Okay. Does that necessarily match the modes and the key? Um, not necessarily, uh, right? <laughs> that third one doesn't have a ton to do with the key. shapes without disregard for the overall key center. Transposing could be planning, or we could be transposing things that fit with the original key center, right? Or we could be transposing things that kind of move with the, um, with the harmonic movement. Let me show you what I mean, because that's a confusing thing to say. So let's say I'm soloing on Blue Bossa, and I'm going to then I might transpose that to F and play the same thing in F. Right? Um, I probably wouldn't particularly call that planing because we're doing it, you know, we're trying to match these chords as they come. In planing, we're generally using it as a way to get outside of the key. So here's my list of three things now. The first is melodic shapes or cells. Cells is just a fancy word for a small set of intervals. Um, I love Herbie Hancock's solo on Witch Hunt. And one of the things that he does is I think he takes either, it's either this shape or this shape. I think it's this one. And he transposes it by minor thirds. Call that planing. Right. Now his works out, you know, and he's a genius, he's Herbie Hancock. His works out beautifully evenly because it takes four minor thirds um, to, uh, to get back to your original key center. So it's like one, two, three, four, one. Part of the art of planing is how do you resolve it, right? Um, so let's say that we were gonna use that same motif, but we're gonna go in major thirds. We'd have to find a different way to resolve it. One question that I have about planing, and I have hints of an answer, is you know, when we're planing, how much are we aiming for the end point and how much are we kind of working off the beginning point? Right? Does that make sense? Like for instance, if I'm doing, uh, you know, if I'm playing descending dominant chords, I'm likely aiming for my end point. I know where I want to get. When I think for a lot of musicians, when you're planning, you start somewhere, you build off of it and you look to find an escape valve at the end, right? Rather than kind of thinking, I know I want to end up there. And so I'm going to think five steps ahead and plan in minor third so that I end up there. I don't think most people are capable of that. Maybe Herbie is, maybe Chick is, and a, a handful of other geniuses. I think for most of the rest of us, uh, it's kind of like, Let's figure out a way to get back into the original key, no matter where we are. And the key to that is just going to be to resolve each note from a note that's not part of the key to a note that is part of the original key. So there, I ended on right, these notes that are all three outside the original key, and I went, right? I resolved them all to adjacent notes within the key. This one resolves to the, that one. This one resolves to that one. That one resolves there. So I think it is okay to plane without aiming. 
I think it's a fair question how many notes could be in a melodic shape that you play. I think it could be an entire phrase, as long as you're capable of transposing it. It's a lot of dissonance for a long time. It depends how much dissonance you're, you're willing to kind of take into account. Okay, so number two, I already kind of referenced that voicings can be plain, but I want to dive into that, you know, a little bit more because if we're comping, it is definitely not, you know, necessarily that we're going to be beneath the melody. Um, and so you might have, let's say we're still in C Dorian, like witch hunt, and here's our main chordal voicing, right? You might just move this around. For me, there's no real rhyme or reason to exactly where I'm moving it, except I know I need to return on a strong rhythmic placement. So it okay. Um, McCoy Tyner is like the guy. Um, moving voices around like this. Kenny Kirkland in the McCoy Tyner School does this kind of thing a ton. Um, and McCoy will really stretch out how long he's planning these voicings and then what's wrong. So you can do it with one hand voicings, you can do it with two hand voicings too. You know, if you're comping behind somebody else. transpositions. I flubbed some of them. Um, but I think our ear mainly hears them as close enough um, that it works out. And I think that is the case as I, as I do, do transcriptions that it's like not all planning is totally perfect. And I think that's okay. There's, you know, people's ear, are people's ears good enough to hear whether something's transposed perfectly or not? Like, probably not. <sighs> okay. Thirdly is harmonies. Okay. And this usually kind of relates to one or two, meaning melodic shapes themselves or voicings, but oftentimes musicians, in order to move outside of um, a stable key center, they'll kind of do something to move the harmonies predictably. Like for instance, we could take that same thing that Herbie did, but instead of just having melodic, we could move the harmony by minor thirds. When we do this, we may or may not be moving the voicings equally by minor third. So I could, for instance, play one bar of C minor. Right, so I'm C minor, E flat, G flat, A, C. exactly moving by those minor thirds, like nothing's being transposed, it's actually the key center that's being transposed. One of my favorite examples of this uh, is from Joshua Redman's recording of Summertime. Brad Meldow plays an incredible solo, um, and he has this moment in the solo where he has a major triad or like triad with an added second, and he goes up by major seconds. So. Cooler than that, I will 
is pretty lame. But you can, like, moving up by major seconds has this really kind of bright, special effect. So it doesn't have to be a specific thing that's transposed. It can be the harmonies as well. All right, folks. Well, I hope that gave you a better sense of what planning is and how it's different than just transposing. Um, if you were into that, you'd probably get uh, some things out of Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2, um, as well as I bet you'd enjoy some of the things that you find in playing solo jazz piano. I appreciate your likes and your comments. Uh, why don't you comment with Delta, my favorite airline? Shout out Delta. Give me some free sky miles uh, if you like this video. Um, and uh, I'll see you around soon. Thanks.